Today on Coffee with Conrad, an interview with Gary Nesbitt, and we're talking about supernatural provision. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. I've been getting lots of emails, lots of messages about a lot of people on the front lines of faith and are saying, Conrad, where where is this provision? Where am I supposed to get it? And I'm like, and, you know, I give them my testimonies. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are out there that just being obedient to the voice of God, following the Spirit, and provision comes. And as I was praying about this, Gary Nesbitt came to mind. And I want you to listen to this. We talk a lot about some nuts and bolts of what it is to walk after the Spirit and about supernatural provision. So without further ado, here's the interview with Gary Nesbitt. Hello, everybody. This is Conrad and Gary Nesbitt. Uh, We're on the phone. He's on his car somewhere in the magical state of Mississippi. How's it going, Gary? Oh, doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm okay. Got a lot going on today. I, I I've had a lot of people sending me messages, um, emails, and they're saying, Conrad, I'm not. I'm working hard on my ministry. I'm trying to do stuff for God, and just why why am I not getting provision? You know why why is the money not coming in? So, and I I share my experiences with them, and, uh, and I thought, you know what, I was praying about it, and he said, Call Gary. God's like, Gary's got this. <laughs> What's yeah, well, I don't have all the answers, but I can I can share some things that the Lord has helped us with, you know. Hey, Amen. Give me some examples of what you think. So, well, uh, Conrad, you know, uh, I run into people all the time. You know, in, in the, the time and day and age we live in, you know, the, mm-hmm. the economy is is uh, is not the best. Uh, you, you hear all types of stories, you know, of things getting worse. And uh, we just need to understand and know that as children of God, uh, if we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you know, uh, he still uh, has a promise in God's Word. God has promised us to take care of us in, in hard times, uh, lean times, rich times. It doesn't make a difference. God's provision is, is still the same. His Word uh, is forever settled in heaven. And, of course, uh, if, if, if a believer uh, does not understand that, doesn't know what God's Word says about God's provision, you know, well then it's going to be difficult because all these, uh, what they hear, see, feel, smell, and touch is screaming at them and telling them, you know, they're going down the tube. And uh, we just have to listen to God and know what God's Word says about that. And, you know, um, one day I was walking along, you know, and, and I could see a little sparrow you know, hopping along on the sidewalk. And uh, and the Lord told me something. The Holy Spirit told me that. He said, you've got something in common with that little bird. You know, and I'm thinking about that. And I said, well, yeah, he's watching over me just like he's watching over that little sparrow, you know. And and that's the example Jesus gave. He said, if, uh, if you then evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Uh, will your Heavenly Father give to you? If he's washing over the sparrow, he's washing over us. But now, the thing that uh, I have run into is that, like everybody else, you know, is that uh, I've had more months left over at the end of the money. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh-huh. and, and I'm staring lack in the face. And so uh, that's when I've had to turn the switch of faith on and just simply say, Lord, I know your word is true. You said that you would take care of me. And you said in your word. So you, if you notice what I'm saying when I'm talking about that, I'm always going back to a verse of Scripture, you know. Um, and so we have to understand exactly what God's word says about us when it comes to finances and about money. Luke 6.38, it says that if you give, of course, it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give to you. And I had to get myself in a place where God, I had to believe that God would move on people to give to me. Now, not that I'm a panhandler, not that I'm asking for money, 
not that I'm trying to squeeze money out of people, but I'm just believing God to use other people that have what I need in order to help me, you know. Right. And of course, I might need somebody to pray for me for healing, or somebody and I might need to speak a word of encouragement to me. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be money. But since we're talking about money, we'll, we'll stay on that. But uh, a lot of folks just can't believe that God will uh, will move on someone to give to them, to help them in time of need. Uh, in a lot of ways, that the Lord uses people to give to me is that in my business, I trust God to make my customer or to move upon them to say yes to do business with me when I approach them in, uh, in my glass business, you know. And every time somebody says yes, I say, thank you, Jesus. That came from you, you know. Uh, and, and it happens every day. And I don't have any really guarantee of any income. I don't get a salary, you know, from, from my business for where I work. Uh, I have to trust the Lord every day to give me customers. Of course, I go out and I talk to people, you know, and I give them my business card. And so the Lord moved upon me up to do business with me as I go out you know, and, and ask for the business, you know. Because everybody's got different ways of making money. People are in business for themselves. Um, and then there are people that's working for somebody else. And they get a certain amount of money every every month, you know, or every week. And they can believe God for a, a, a raise, you know, or a promotion or more hours or whatever. And, and, of course, in the middle of that, God will call supernatural things to happen in your finances. Because we've had it happen many times. And uh, I had an example uh, that I, was, I think I told it to you. Uh, we were down to about 80-something dollars in the bank, and uh, I went to um, do a windshield over at Olive Branch, Mississippi. I made $45 for that. So we had about $125, $30. And we were going somewhere that weekend to hear somebody speak. We were going to a church meeting about three and a half miles away from Tunica. And anyway, we had two other couples coming with us. And uh, we were down to about 130 bucks. I mean, you know, to go on a two or three day trip, get a hotel room, pay for gas and food and so forth, $125, is not going to do it. You know, so I called all my friends. There were six of us going. I called my friends and I said, listen, we're going to have to call this off. You know, uh, we can't go. I don't have enough money. You know, they may have it. I didn't. Y'all want to go, you can go ahead and go. But they all decided, well, we won't go. If you're not going. I said, okay. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, if you don't want us to go on that trip, that's fine. We'll stay home and uh, life will go on. We're happy. You know, I'm not starving. Uh, you know, but I had a call from somebody to go take care of some business that I had with this person. And so I went to their house and we took care of our business. And uh, they were one of my windshield customers. And, and the lady turned around and she said, listen, I've got to go and get something. I'll be right back. And she came back, and she brought me a check. And she had it folded. She put it uh, in my pocket. She said, now, don't look at it. It's not very much, but I just wanted to uh, give you this. You know, and I thought, well, maybe she was giving me $25, $30 for, to pay for my gas. I time to come over and take care of this business we had going on. And so I said, well, I appreciate that. You know, you don't have to. She said, no, I want to do it. It's not very much. I said, okay, well, great. I'll take it. <laughs> Amen. I got out to the car. And I pulled the check out of my pocket and opened it up, and uh, it was a check for one thousand dollars. Amen. Amen. For one dollar, I said, "Lord, thank you." So I called all my friends. I said, "We're going this weekend to this church meeting to hear this guy preach." <laughs> so somebody said, "Well, I just can't believe that'll happen," but it does happen. It does happen. People, you know, God can move on people. Now, uh, if you don't believe that'll happen, well, then you know it's not going to happen. Let me interject something because um, there's something people don't know. You basically are sensitive to the Holy Spirit all day, every day. And it's it's something like what God sees you do in secret. He will reward you openly. I mean, you'll go right. ahead and approach people with the gospel. And, uh, you know, God, God's god got you. He's going to take care of you. That That's the point yeah. that you're getting at. I mean, you actually approach oh. people with the gospel as the Holy Spirit prompts you. Right, right. And I had, let, me, let me tell you this, I had the Holy Spirit talk to me yesterday before I left Tunico. And, um, and and I was walking around the corner from the post office, 
And right down a dead end street, there's a bar there. You know, it's it, it's a, a club, a little cute joint, whatever you want to call it. And been there forever and a day there in Tunica. And uh, anyway, there was about maybe seven or eight guys sitting out there at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And they were, you know, sipping on their beer cans and bottles of vodka. And uh, and I saw them, okay? And if, when I see that, I, I'm kind of drawn to that. I want to... I want to go and talk to them. I have a uh, an anointing, you know, to, to evangelize. You know, I, I love, I'm drawn to that, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and I try to walk in that every day. But uh, I didn't want to go down there. My flesh did not want to go and talk to these guys sitting there, you know, half drunk. And, and then they'll tell them what they're going to tell me and say. Sometimes you get in a group of guys like that, they'll start cussing or somebody will start saying something crazy, you know, and all that. And I said, well, I'm not, in my mind, I said, well, I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to waste my time with it. You know, well, that was my flesh. And then when I said that, inside of my heart, I knew I got to go down and talk to them. Cause I knew the Lord <laughs> wanted me to go. And I said, well, Lord, I'm going to throw caution to the wind. I'm going to go down there and talk to these guys about Jesus. Now, of course, I used my business first. I tell them about windshields and we're fixing windshields and so forth and do the replacements, and then I'm working around, you know, to get to talk to them about the Lord. So I just opened my mouth, and I said, well, listen, I want to tell you guys about Jesus, and I want y'all to know God loves you. And I stood there for about 15 or 20 minutes and preached the gospel to them, and every one of them listened to me. And no, no one got rowdy or nothing. I ended up praying for one man. God healed his stomach. He had chronic pain in his stomach, and it was probably because he was, you know, drinking that vodka, you know, every day. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and he said, well, I'm a Christian. I go to church and everything. I said, well, you need deliverance from that uh, addiction you have. And his stomach was burning all the time. And so he let me pray for him. And then another man came to the left. He held his hand out and he said, I want you to pray for my eyes. I've got cataracts and I've got glaucoma in my eyes, you know. And so he had faith to be prayed for. And so I prayed for him. Then I prayed for the lady on the right. And, I mean, it was a glorious time. And before I left, the man that I prayed for first, he said, well, man, God healed me. I, I I feel better already, you know. He said, I appreciate that. Well, you see, they all heard that, and God touched them. Well, I'm saying all that to say this, that if we listen to the Holy Spirit, and if we're willing to lay down our life and take up the cross, you know, and do what he says to do, Yeshua, Hamashiach, will see to it, that we're going to eat. He's going to see to it that we're going to pay our bills. He's going to help us. Now, it has been a struggle. You know, I, I've had some, some battles, you know, but I had to stand my ground. And, and I thank God for every test that comes my way because I know that he's training me. So he's getting his children ready for hard times to come. You know, we need to, uh, to understand that, you know. Amen. And uh, no grumbling, no complaining about our circumstances. I'm learning to thank God in every situation that I'm in. And uh, and he does wonderful things like that, you know. He, it, it's just exciting. And I've seen him uh, make a way where it seems to be no way. Uh, we had a check come in the mail the other day, $600 out of nowhere, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and uh, from a refund on an investment I made probably three or four years ago. And uh, it it was just, I thought, man, I didn't know this was going to be coming, you know. Another thing is this. People say it's my ministry. Well, it's not your ministry. It's God's ministry. And he's yeah, God's, yeah. God's will, his bill. And the money does come out of nowhere. You just follow the Holy Spirit. And another thing mm-hmm. that I noticed that you said is you're always going back to the Word. And that's faith. Yeah. See, faith the very thing of faith is it gets us through a trial. I mean, or it wouldn't be called faith, right? Right, right. And faith is a substance of faith not seen. So sometimes I'm not seeing, I'm not, my body's not feeling like it's healed. Uh, my pocketbook or my check account may not look like it's overflowing. But according to the Word of God, He daily loaded me with benefits. He said He would meet all my needs according to His riches and glory. Uh, he said he would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there would be not enough room to receive it. Uh, again, we pay our time. Now, another thing I want to say, several years ago, I did something really stupid, okay? And, how, you know, I, I want to say, if anybody's done something real stupid, raise your hand. And I think, 
and most of us would, would, would raise our hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I listened to somebody that was talking about they did not believe in tithing, that tithing wasn't under the old, uh, was under, uh, wasn't under the new covenant, da, 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 da. And I know there's people have different thoughts about that, but I, this, I, 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 I heard something wrong and I listened to it and, uh, I stopped tithing. And I said, well, I'll just give, you know, here and there. Well, really, when I stopped tithing and started giving, I ended up just tipping God to the point where I didn't give anything. There wasn't any, Set amount that I was giving, like through the time. I went ten years and I didn't pay time, and I end up when I look back on it, I didn't I give it hardly anything, you know. And God was blessing me during that time financially, and so I brought a curse upon myself. I was cursed with a curse, and I had to repent of that, and I asked God to forgive me. And I said, Lord, I don't care what anybody else believes. I'm gonna take ten percent, at least ten percent of what I make, and give it to you. Right. And uh, and I repented of that sin. And since we've been doing this, God has miraculously worked in our life in a powerful way. And you got you got to give. I mean, if you're stingy and tight, you know, uh, you're not listening to the Lord to give and to help people. Well, then you know that could be a hindrance. I know it's a hindrance, you know. And and bottom line, here's another thing: the Bible says that He's never seen the righteous forsaken and his seed begging for bread. And he's talking about the righteous. He's talking about the holy. He's talking about the pure in heart. And we have to, to work at being holy and pure. It's not easy. It's difficult. But it pays off. It really pays off. And, uh, and a lot of people say, well, you're just talking about being legal, legalism. And, and, you know, I'm the righteousness of God, you know, Christ and God, the grace of God covers all my sins. And that, that's what a lot of people believe. The grace of God tells you to deny ungodliness and all, wor- all worldliness and to live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. And so holiness and purity is, is a very important thing. If we're not living holy and pure before the Lord, you know, and, and, and making sure that we're keeping sin out and not being a friend of the world, if we do those things, God will show us how he'll provide for us because that's what he told the children of Israel. He said, if you put me first, if you worship me, he said, I will bless your bread and your water, and I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. And that mm-hmm. was under the old covenant. That was under the old covenant. So if he did that then, how much more, and what, what wonderful thing more that he's going to do for us under the new covenant, it would keep ourselves pure and holy and mm-hmm. walk, you know, in the goodness mm-hmm. of God. Of course, you know, a lot of folks don't want to hear that. They want the paycheck, but they don't want to do what they have to to do to get that blessing. <laughs> and, and really, we're, we're giving back to him what's already his. But to be blessed like we are and to not give and, and to help support uh, not just uh, the churches, but the poor, our neighbors, you know, and people that need things. You know, I, I've, I've had times where... Uh, God would uh, I feel led to, to do a windshield for somebody, uh, a windshield repair, and, and I knew they were having problems paying for it, and I would I would not even, I would not charge them for it, you know. Uh, I can't do that every day and stay in business, but you know, from time to time that'll happen, and uh, and I'm giving money to people right out of my pocket, you know, if I had it. There's a scripture in James that says, you know, if you. Uh see your neighbor he's destitute of daily bread and he's cold and you have the food with you and you have your jacket with you but you just say peace be warm and filled and you don't give them the things that they need so such faith save you you know paul says we need to bury one of those burdens and thus fulfill the law of christ which is love love one another as i've loved you and yeah when you see a need when you see a need and you can fill it you do that and that's what god asks us to do so Right, right. And, you know, I, I remember there was a time there when God was blessing me in my business. I was making a lot of money. I mean, I was busy. I was doing well. And I do remember those times that uh, I would spend my money on things for myself. You know, I'm a I'm, I'm a gadget-type guy. I, I bought the latest iPad. You know, uh, I buy this, I buy that. Uh, you know, I try to just... You know, I was enjoying life, I thought. Mm-hmm. And then to come out that all the things that I was getting involved in was taking time away from God, you know. 
Yeah. And that that he is my treasure. The Lord is my pleasure, not the things of this world. And so, boy, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't have been so, uh, I was basically lusting after material things. I was being covetous after material things Amen. and enjoying the good life, you know, and I thought. But then you pay a price for it. I mean, it comes back to bite you in the honey, as they say. Uh, we bear fruit, you know, for the things that we do that God's not pleased with. So, you know, the ship had turned around, the tide had been turning, and, you know, I'm, I'm not no millionaire. I'm not, I'm not no some famous evangelist, you know, with an airplane flying all over the country, and, and people are not uh, calling me to come preach in their churches and, and all this kind of wonderful stuff and writing a bestseller book. None of those things are happening. But let me tell you what, I don't need that. All I need to do is please God and find out what he wants me to do. Mm-hmm. And if he wants me to stand in front of a, an old bar, you know, a run-down bar in Tunica, Mississippi, and pray for uh, somebody that's almost drunk out of their mind, <laughs> God heals them. Amen. You know, hey, I'm all for it because I, I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And and I tell you what, I, I got peace in my soul. I'm happy in God, and it's not about the money. But we do know that we do we do understand and know that God sees our needs. He, he sees it, and we don't have enough food. He knows all those things. But again, we have to come by faith and tell Him what His Word says. Say, Lord, You said. And this morning, Nancy and I, we were praying, and we said, Lord, You said that You'd open up the windows of heaven to us. And we thank you for it. And, and it's a daily walk of faith, and it's a good fight of faith. And it, it's great. It's, it's, I'm, I'm having the most exciting time, you know, seeing how God is taking care of us. You mentioned earlier in the podcast that times are getting tough, you know, and we're, we're sitting here, this economy is just teeter-tottering. I mean, how much how longer can they keep printing money? There's going to be a point where the just, shall live by faith, we're going to have to follow the Holy Spirit, right? Right, absolutely. And and that's the reason why uh, the, the, the seeds that we're planting now as far as doing what God tells us to do mm-hmm. and getting close to God is going to pay off in the future. And uh, and I've always thought about the fact that what if, uh, let's paint a scenario here, what if uh, the government said, well, we're going to outlaw Bible. You can't, the junk, we're going to take up all the Bible, and nobody can uh, have own a Bible anymore. And do you know that's being done in other countries right now? Right. You know? And, and we're, we're kind of spoiled here in America. But, you know, those things can happen right here in the good old U.S. of A. And so the Bible also says that we're to hide God's Word in our heart to be full of the Word of God, and not just scrambling, you know, to find where Scripture is that we can stand on, but that we can reach down in our heart and we can speak out what we have uh, put into our heart through memorization of the Scripture and hide it in our heart. And so what if they decided to get rid of all the Bibles and you can't own a Bible? Well, is there enough of us that have the Word of God in us where we can get together and I say, okay, uh, Conrad, what scriptures do you have memorized? Let's write these down, you know, and uh, I'll tell your wife. Well, what scriptures do you have? Write down your verses that you've memorized, and then I'll write down mine. And then everybody write them down, and we've got several pages of scriptures, you know, that we can stand on and believe God for. But according to what I have ran into with most people, I ask them, do you know the Word? How many scriptures do you have memorized? And most of them will say, with a question mark, uh, John 3.16, maybe. And <laughs> yeah. I kind of laughed and said, well, you know, if that's all you got in you and they ban Bibles, we're in trouble, you know. And right. so uh, the primary thing for the provision of God, first thing first is hide the Word in your heart so that you can have faith. Uh, the Bible says there's going to be a great falling away in the end times. And I do believe that the reason for that is there are many people that are sitting in church pews and they raise their hands and they're praising God and they could not draw their sword out, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and attack the enemy for anything. I mean, they have no word in the heart. Now, you can ask them about who won the championship uh, Super Bowl last year and, uh-huh. and how much did their quarterback weigh and how much money they made and how many 
uh, fumble they made during one game. And they can tell you all that stuff, but they can't tell you hardly anything about the Word of God. And so that this is the, the critical thing right here. If we don't know what thus saith the Lord says in the heat of the battle, we're kind of we're going to be kind of like Barney Fife, you know, on Mayberry. He's mm-hmm. pulling out that book and he's shaking and he's trying to find that bullet. <laughs> it's a real comical scene there, but it really rang true for a lot of Christians. You know, we really, uh, I want to be like that ninja, you know, warrior that pulls his sword out skillfully and, and you just look at me and you start trembling. <laughs> That's where the demons and evil spirits need to be looking at us. When mm-hmm. they see us and oh, he knows the word of God and once he starts quoting it, we're in trouble. You know, <laughs> the the thing I was thinking about as well is, you know, a lot of us lean to our own understanding. You know, we may lose our jobs. We may be in a place where there's, you know, we're, the things that used to work for us don't work. And then we're going right. to have we're going to have to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like when God says, go witness to that man at the bar. I mean, you got we've yeah. going to have and it says the just shall live by faith. And when you're talking about the word, whosoever abides in the words of Jesus and the words abide in him, will be his disciples indeed. Our character will exude what Jesus does, and we'll get the provision yeah. that he promises, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, we see the story in the gospel how Jesus was preaching to several thousand people, and uh, there were two different instances. You know, he was bad. I mean, they couldn't get nothing over on him because he was sure of his weapons. He was sure of how he was standing against those that were trying to kill him. And so, uh, you know, we, we are fighting the good fight of faith. The, the, the Bible says he, the enemy, the devil is going about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And, and so when, whenever we're uh, compromised with God and we're sitting on the fence and we're lukewarm in the heat of the battle, we're going to lose every time. But I like winning. I like winning and seeing that God was my helper. And uh, I love it when... Uh, the Lord gives me business, and the customer mm-hmm. says yes to me, and, and I know that's provision of the Lord, but, uh, again, what you're talking about in, in hard times, I, I think that most people don't realize what's coming. Yeah, that whole thing about think, seeking who he may devour, you basically give him the permission to neutralize your faith. You you say, Mother, may I? Well, yeah, you can come in, and I, I won't believe the Word of God on this little issue. God won't see, but he does. He sees everything, and you've just given the devil permission to devour you. <laughs> yeah, I gave him legal right, and now when I'm praying about a bill, I'm praying about money. I said, Lord, I need your help, and the devil says, that sucker, he don't realize it. I'm in there, and it ain't coming to pass because he opened the door. You know, So we have to stay on top of things, and it's a daily thing, you know. Somebody said, well, I, somebody said, well, I don't want to live like that. You know, well, well if you don't want to live like that, you're, you're not going to walk in the blessings of God. Amen. Well, Gary, I'm going to ask you to uh, pray. I'm going to use your Facebook link, if that's okay. And if you want to give people, is that okay? Can I use your Facebook link, uh, link for contact? Or you want to use your email? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, either, either way or both of them. Yeah. Okay, I'll include Gary's Facebook link wherever you hear this podcast. It'll be in the show notes, so just remember that. And Gary, can can you pray for those people? Um, yes, okay. yes. Amen, go ahead. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that there's no distance in prayer. And that you know, your, your thoughts about us are too many to count. We know that we are on your heart and that you love us and that you care for us like a father or a mother would care for their children. And, Father, I know you like to spoil us, but you also ask us to walk holy and pure before you and be obedient to you so that we can receive a manifestation of your glory, a manifestation of your grace. And, Father, I ask that whoever is listening to this, if something has been said to touch their heart, if something has been said to highlight into their heart and mind that they need to make some changes, and to lay aside any weight, anything, any sin, anything that's preventing us from receiving from you, I pray, God, that you would, uh, by your Holy Spirit, uh, show this to them and make it very plain, make it very simple, but also make it very powerful so that they can repent and that they can understand and know your plan and listen to you and receive the blessing. Because you said in your word that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow. We can get it 
the devil's way, and it's going to add pain and misery to our lives. But we want to get it your way, Lord. Amen. We want to be blessed your way because you said it add us no soil. And we thank you, God, for everything you've given to us. We thank you, Father, for our healthy bodies. We thank you, Lord, for food on the table that we eat, the clothes that we wear. And, and we just bless your holy name, Lord. And I pray and I agree with everybody that's listening to this that they would just hook up with faith and begin to worship and praise you and glorify your holy name so that they can have a financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus through what's being said today on this broadcast. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Gary, I really appreciate you doing this uh, podcast with me because a lot of people have been dealing with me right now about this, so this is a good topic. All right, Amen. All right, everybody, you can follow Gary on the Facebook page. I'm including the show notes. God bless you, man. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Now, wasn't that awesome? So if you want to follow Gary Nesbitt, I am going to provide his Facebook link wherever you hear this podcast. There's going to be some show notes uh, and it'll also be on conradrocks.net. There will be a link to his Facebook page, so you can give him a follow. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at conradrocks.net.